Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Everybody, could you stand and give God some glory? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you this one thing. 
It was the longest I've ever been in the Lord. And I started this journey of shutting down with him from 1999. And I didn't shut down at the beginning to receive no word from him or to see no visions. I shut down to spend time because I was hungry and I wanted more from God. Amen. I was thirsty. Mm. And it was a time when we were, when they were having a conference and, and I, what I was hearing was revelation, but there was some mixture that I was confused with. And so I went in that night and I came out 21 days later. And that was the beginning of my journey of yearly fasting and isolation with the Lord. Because I needed to hear from God for myself. Yes. So I give him thanks. And through these many years, he began to open my spiritual eyes and show me visions and speak to me in my spirit. So most of what of you going to receive today is through visions. Some of it he spoke in my spirit, but with some people he would speak in their spirit with me. Most of what I get is through visions and dreams. This is for the body of Christ at large. I was in stillness and quietness before the Lord. And right before the word of the Lord that was spoken to me in my heart, I was shown, he showed me a vision of deformed feet. Not the full length of the land, but just the footpath. And as I look at this deformed foot, I saw one foot, and it was badly deformed. Then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he said, this deformed foot that you're looking at is the body of Christ. He said, this is the body of Christ. He said, I have a deformed body. He said, preaching, but deformed. Teaching, but deformed. Prophesying, but deformed. He said, rosing the body of Christ is deformed. And when you have a, anything that is deformed, he said, you will never be able to function to the capacity and the level that you were ordained to perform in. He said the body of Christ, if they remain in this deformed condition, will never operate in the fullness of the strength and the power that I ordained the body of Christ to operate in the earth. He said, we're making a lot of sound but there's no power behind the sound. Good. Hear me by the spirit of the living God. Good. He said the enemy has desired to keep the body of Christ in a deformed state. That's the enemy desire. To keep us in a deformed state. He said where it will never, where the body of Christ will never, never, never. He don't mind us shouting. He don't mind us preaching and teaching and prophesying. He don't mind us speaking in tongues. But what he is afraid of is the authority and the power that Christ has given to the body of Christ for us to function at that level. Yes, that's right. That's his mandate. To deny us of the fullness of the operation of the power that the body of Christ was ordained to operate in. He says, Rosie, each and every one of you, that includes me too, because I'm a part of the body of Christ. He said, I'm not operating in your full God-given potential. He said, I have given the body of Christ all power operate and function 
in the earth. But yet, it is not happening. He said, if a child is born with deformity, that child will not be able to function in the full capacity as the child that, that is born without deformity. His or her capabilities are limited. Saints of the living God, we have allowed the enemy to operate and to keep us in this bondage too long. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we've become satisfied and complacent mm. for just church. My God. True. No signs and wonders, no power. Mm. Counterfeit mm. in most of what we do. Oh, Lord, Emotionalism and hype. Oh, I got to give it to you like I know I give it to you. Oh, it's time for us to allow the true spirit of the Lord to flow. That we can see the manifest power and don't just read about it in the book of Acts. Because yes. God ain't changed. He's still God. Yes. I heard yesterday, and this is not a part of the prophetic word, because I've been getting a lot of calls after that march and before the march of survivors of abuse. And one call, I mean, I don't answer the phone when I'm ministering. And for some reason, I answer the phone for the first time that day. And I and they said, just come from that. And I told them, I said, didn't you go to this person? Because they operate in that area of deliverance. And they said, yes. And what they told me, it broke my heart, Pastor Eddie. Because they said, I had to pay. Oh, oh my goodness. My God. And you're back at the back of the line if you don't have the money. My God. And she true. said, I don't have the money. Everything you have to pay for cloth, water, pillow. Mm. Mm. I call that counterfeit. Mm. That's counterfeit. That's big. Big prophesied accuracy. But yet Jesus in the book of Revelation said he was a false prophet. That's right. mm. So sometimes we get mixed up in the gift and the character will determine if you're a true prophet. That's right, that's right. According to the standard of God. Yes. Not the gifting that we receive. Because we must remember the gift and calling is without repentance. Yes. We can be fornicating and lying and adultery and doing all kind of mess and still operating in that gift. Yes. That's, right. that's why the body of Christ has to come to another level of a deeper revelation and, and our intimacy with God to discern because the closer we come in, the more deception will unveil. That we will not be deceived. That's why he said, even in the very uh, end of time, even the very elect will be deceived. Let me run on with this word. He said, I'm talking about this child as he gave me an illustration of the body of Christ. He said, what the child will be able to do, those are the one that is not deformed, the other child will not be able to do it. He said, this is what my children has allowed the enemy to do, to limit its function and abilities in the earth. We have allowed the enemy to limit us. True. Wow. And that's why the world don't recognize and don't see us for who we really are, but they don't know who we are. True. 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 Because if the fullness of the power of God would operate through the body of Christ, then we will be able, they will stand and say, hey. Hallelujah. It will be our God, you're right. He said, my church is functioning and operating with the gifts, but not with power. We are operating with limited power. He said, your deformity has limited you not to move in the full strength and power of the gifts that I have given to the body of Christ. Right before I received this word, like I told you, I saw the deformer, the deformed foot. 
And then the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, Rosie, many of my children are sitting right in the church and are dying. Mm. Yes. He said, this is from the head throughout the body. Yeah. That means from the pulpit to the back door. Yeah. We are in church, but we are dying. Yeah. He said, my house has become a church full with dead and weak saints. He said they are weak and lean spiritually. There's no fatness within the body of Christ. And then he says, return, my bride, return back to your true love, says the Lord. Return back to me, and I will give you fatness again. This one was not in a vision, this one was through. I was in prayer and in intercession, deep in intercession. Because that's who I am. I'm an intercessor before any title. I am an intercessor. That's who I am. That's my love, that's my passion, that's the core. You take that away from me, you take everything from me. You take my life. Without that, I cannot function. Some prophets can function and some people can function without prayer and intercession. You take that from me and Pastor Eddie, I'm blind. Mm. I cannot see. Because the stronger part of my gift is as I'm a seeker. I see and then he would give me the revelation of what I'm seeing. You take that from me and I'm blind. My eyes are blind. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, I need a voice in the earth. He just said it. That's what he said to me. I need a voice in the earth. I need a purified voice. Not just a voice. Not just a voice. I need a purified voice to send up a clear sound to heaven and to, a sound, and to sound the alarm. He said, Rosie, there are many voices, but not many but not many are sending up a sanctified and a purified sound. So many are clogged up with everything you can imagine. Pride, arrogance, sexual sins. Just our body, is the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. That's us. He said jealousy, envy, strife have us clogged up. And so the sound is going to heaven, but it is muscled. You know when something is clogged up by the sound, it's muscled because of the garbage within you and I. Jesus. Yes. And so the body of Christ individually, uh, uh, the body of Christ, me and you, we got to return back to more fasting and praying like our old saints yes. used to do. Yes. Sanctification is a dirty word now in the body of Christ. You don't even hear that message preached no more. But as a child growing up, that was the norm. We have to come back to sanctif sanctification. Yes. We have to come back to purifying. Yes. Living, but can't help yourself from fornicating. Yes. In the body of Christ, ministering, psalmists, preachers, got your wife, but still fooling around with my own woman. That's what happened in the body of Christ today. That's where we at. Since we got to get it right. We got to get it right. He said, you're clogged up not only with uh, these other sins, but one of our sins that we try to overlook, he said, we clogged up also with compromise. Yes. Yes. And so we act like that is not a sin, but it's a sin. Yes. Yes. He said, we clogged up with not only compromise, he said, we clogged up with busyness, and I can say, ah! Because he was talking to me, busyness. Yes. Too busy. Yes. And so after I came out, he said, you go back, Rosie, to where you started and what got you where you were. And so at my beginning of my early war with God, I used to shut down with him at least three times 
spend that day with God. He said, go back to where you begin. And so I went back to two days out of the week where I shut down. It doesn't matter who call or who don't call. That's God's time. Saints of God, as preachers and as pastors and as teachers and prophets and five-word ministry, we have to set the example of spending valuable time with God. We cannot be working for Him, but not spending time with Him. Amen. Good word. He says, busyness and the spirit of distraction is on an assignment with the body of Christ. He said it's time for the body of Christ to return to holiness and sanctification and righteousness. He said, I will return. I will return for a bride that is adorned in all of her glory and all of us. So it doesn't matter how we look now, when God returns, we, the saints, will be glorified. We will be adorned in all of his glory. So that was an encouragement for me to know that when he returns, He's going to purify the body of Christ before he returns. He said, in all his glory, I will return for a bride that is adorned in all her glory and honor. Her glory will shine bright again. Talking about us, the bride. Yes. She will shine in the fullness of all the glory once more in the earth. So before Christ returns, the bride will be the bride. We will look like a bride. We will act like a bride. We will operate like a bride. Hey. Awesome. You can rejoice right there. Amen. Because I'm messy and unbiased. The bride look right now. But I got to serve notice to the devil. We will be the power and the glory yeah. will come in the church again. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. And then he says, Pastors and teachers and evangelists, prophets. He said, Many of you are leading my people away from me. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Your compromising teachings yeah. are luring the bride to go yeah. after strange yeah. gods. Jesus. So we got to be careful with our teaching yeah. and our prophesying. Because the, the Holy Spirit says, It is luring his bride, his bride, his sheep away from him. And causing his bride to go after false or strange gods. He said, the gods of this world. He said, judgment is in the air for you. Yes. Meaning those ones of us who are luring the bride away. Yes. He said, some big name pastors and some small name pastors will be slain, will be cut down. Yes. Some will be exposed. Yes. My God. And then he went on to say, another day. I'm trying to skip through. This one is as I wake in the drowsiness of sleep. The Holy Spirit, I wake up with the Holy Spirit speaking in my spirit. I wake up with him talking to me this morning. And as I uh, wake, still drowsy with sleep, the Holy Spirit began to speak. And this is what he said as I opened my eyes. He said, Rosie, altars built, physical or spiritual altars. Whatever the altar we build. Mm -hmm. He said, the, those altars should be built unto the Lord. Yes, yes. But he said, he went on for he said, not only should we build altars, and I'm talking about more of a spiritual altar. He said, the altar that we build, it should be built unto him. Yeah. But he went on to speak to me, and he said, but the true altar. Yeah. <laughs> he said, Rosie, the true altar that should be built is the altar of your heart. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's good. It's your heart and my heart should be the altar yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. This one is the intercessors, prayer warriors, and whatever they may call ourselves. 
the Holy Spirit. As these words were spoken to me, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me very heavy. And he led me into a time of crying out just for intercessors and prayer warriors. The burden was very heavy. The Holy Spirit began to speak about the hour of a watchman. And this is what the watchman's hour, he said. The watchman's hour is for us as a watchman. He said, I am. There's an anointing on the watchman. Yes. He said, there's an anointing. There's a, there's a special anointing for the watchman to cry out. He said, this is the hour for us to cry out. He said, the form of prayer will not do it in this hour. It's not going to help us in this hour. Amen. The enemy has intensified yes. his fight against the body of Christ. He said, this is the hour for the watchman to cry out for the heart and the mind of the Father. Yes, oh, yes, that's right. Jesus. That the mind and the, and the heart of the Father will be fulfilled in the earth. Yes. It's time for us to cry out. Yes. He said, this is the hour when I want to birth out the watchman's cry of travail. And I can remember when he gave me this one, I can remember my grandma, because my grandma was a praying woman. And I would hear her in the wee hours of the morning groaning and groaning. And then I understand what the Spirit of the Lord was saying. This is the hour where I want the watchman to go back to travail. Yes. Yes. Where is the travail? The scripture said, when Zion travailed, Zion gave birth. This is the hour. He said, Watchman, this is the hour. Not for, like I told you, not a form of prayer, because it will not do it. What we are about to encounter this season. He said, This is the hour for you to cry out to give birth. This is when you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to take you into the deep trenches yes. and the goddess of prayer. And then we will shake not only heaven, but we will shake hell with our travailing in prayer. Yes. Mm. He said, let your cry take you deep into the trenches yes. to call out. It is so deep that you're calling out your you're crying out, he said, for the lost, the backsliders. Yes. He said, ask me yes. for the spirit of travail yes. that they would come home. Yes. The backsliders would come home. Mm -hmm. He said, watch one. It's time for you and I to come out of the loop wall. Yes. 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 I'm yes. talking to intercessors, prayer warriors. He says, time to come out of the lukewarm state yes. of prayer and get into the heart of the Father. This for the body of Christ for the Bahamas. That was for the body of Christ at large. Wherever we are in the earth, that was for us. But this is specifically for the Bahamas. As I was in the spirit, the Lord took me in deep intercession. This one is in the intercession and he began I began to groan and I began to go into deep intercession with this one. And the spirit of the Lord became very heavy and, and I became very burdened. And I was asking Jesus to help me. That's how deep the burden was. I was crying out, help me Jesus, help me God. And as I lay on my floor rolling, rolling and crying, the burden became clearer what this was so heavy about. And it was heavy for the pastors in the Bahamas. And as I cried out, I pleaded for the pastors and the spiritual leaders to return back to God in this country. And the Holy Spirit spoke these words to me. He said, pastors and spiritual leaders in the land are not seeking my face diligently, some of them the way they should. He said, some of them, Rosie, don't even have a prayer life. Don't commune with me. Mm. Jesus. He said, I have prayerless life. No hunger for me 
see all my presence. Some have turned to all sorts of things. He said, you could, that you could ever imagine. He said, their hands, some of them, their hands are what's put to unclean things. He said, some of their bought, their beds have been defiled. He said, pride and arrogance are some of the pastors and spiritual leaders are their clothing. You're dressed. That's your garment, pride and arrogance. Haughtiness has overtaken some of them. He said, but rosy, rosy, rosy. And I began to scream as I was receiving this. He said, rosy, I will visit the pulpit again in the Bible. Amen. He visited before. If you would go to my website, you would see he had visited before because he told me he was coming in the form of death. And when I shared in Nassau, I would just get calls after calls because they was adding up all those who died. Some reached with shock. But he said, I will visit the pulpit again in the Bahamas. Pastors will be humble in the Bahamas. He said, the axe is laid at the altar. For many have a form of prayer, but not praying. I will expose the wolves from the shadows in this land. Our help should say, help me, Holy Spirit, to turn completely to you. Yes. That was my cry. Because when he says spiritual leaders, this ain't just for pastors. Yes, yes. Anybody who preached the gospel, let it be fivefold ministry preach the gospel. Intercessors in the Bahamas, the Holy Spirit, he said it's time for us to go to another level. He says, wake up, intercessors, wake up. The first one was for the intercessors at large, but this one, here it is in Jesus. He said, wake up, wake up. That telling me, you and I were asleep. And with this one, I, I had to call some key people in different islands, including Nassau, to get prayer warriors together right then and there. I could not even wait until I get out for what I was receiving. He said, wake up, intercessor, wake up. It is an emergency 911 call. Just for the intercessors in the Bible. He says, a 911 call. He said, wake up for your nation. It's an emergency call. It's an urgent call for your nation. He said, take up the burden and go into travail and go into a loud crying out, travailing for the land. Your country is in deep trouble. Yes, it is. He said, the war for your country is real in oh my God. Oh my God. He said, travail for the heart and the soul of this nation. He said, get down to slap floor and ashes and cry out. Send out a war cry throughout the last He says, time to wake up. Shake yourself and cry out for your land. This one is for the Bahamas. Intercessors, we have to pray for the country. Yeah. And I'm talking about serious intercession. Yeah. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me about my nation. Most of what I'm giving to you, I saw it in visions. And then I was seeing as I began to cry, I talked and scream out oh, loud. And all I was saying was, oh, Bahamas, oh, Bahamas, as I cried aloud. And then the Holy Spirit began to say, weep for your nation, weep for your nation, weep over the land, Rosie. And then I began to repeat what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. And I began, I kept saying, weep over the land, weep over the land. Then the Holy Spirit spoke again, weep over the land. And then he said, there are some dark days coming, weep. As the Holy Spirit spoke these words, I began to see flashes 
of poverty all over. Mm. Wow. Poverty. Mm. I began to cry and cry and weep and snort and tears. I was crying uncontrollable. And I said, God, what is this you're showing me? Mm. I began to see poverty and calamity everywhere. As I cry out and said, God, wake up the intercessors, wake up the prophets, wake up in the land, wake up. Do not be deceived. He said, Bahamas, listen to me by the Spirit of the Lord. He said, Bahamas, do not be deceived by flurry words. I repeat it again. Bahamas, do not be deceived by flurry words. They don't be deceived by flurry words. As the Spirit of the Lord spoke those, these words, flurry words, then I saw flags of all colors from every nation. I remember 2012, I saw a flag seven yes. years ago. Yes. That flag was China flag, and the Bahamas flag and China flag took over the Bahamas flag. And he said, go to the airwaves and warn the Bahamian people. And then he began to tell me what was coming with China. That was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And then this time, seven years later, I don't go to the airwaves unless he said, seven years later, he said, go to the airwaves and warn the people. I had a fight in Nassau. Good Friday, I was on some radio broadcasts. But that night, I deliver what God said to him. Yeah, yeah, he said, I saw flags of every nation. And as I look at these flags, the Holy Spirit said, tell the Bahamas. They are coming. In other words, the nations are coming. So that's why you and I can't pray a form of prayer no more. We got to get serious with praying by ourselves. We can't just talk about it, we can't preach about it. It's time to go to battle. Hallelujah. And our greatest weapon in the earth that can change earth and heaven is prayer. Yeah. No other weapon, right. as great as America army is, it still cannot defeat heaven oh. only in earth. But the weapon we have is greater than their weapon. And we don't use it. Hallelujah. It's the weapon of prayer that changes yes, things in the earth yes, and things in heaven. Mm. He said, the nations are coming. Tell them, get ready, the nations are coming. And then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, this can be intercepted if my people, go back to what Pastor Eddie said, he said, if my people, my people, he said, if my people will get in the trenches of prayer and not in a form of prayer, the form will not stop this one, Rosie. And then the Holy Spirit said, I will judge this land. This land will be judged. But how much you are heading down a road of no return? My God. He said, I am about to humble you. You will wear the garment of humility. Get yeah, ready, Bahamas. Yeah. Your garments will be yes. humility and humbleness. Yes. Yes. You will no longer be able to say, I am a peacock. He said, I have given you leaders that are full bent. So we thought we vote for them. But God told me to tell the behavior people, I give you them. He said, because of your stiffness and your hard head, I give you them. And he said, they are full bent on leading you down a road of destruction. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm not a politician, I related or connected, never was and never will be. <laughs> if I've been to one rally in my 60 plus years, I've been to a lot my God. in my whole entire life. That's how much I am into politics. I do listen to them. That's right. Because I've got to hear from God. Oh, so I cannot allow what I'm hearing from them to come out with soulish and mix up yeah. prophetic words. Right. She could tell you my TV is hardly on. Sometimes I don't know why I am paying for cable. Because <laughs> I don't use it. 
He said, I give you leaders that are bringing you down the road of humility. Your leaders will take you down the road of humility. He said, your leaders are not going. He said, they are running. They are running into destruction. He said, listen to this, listen, listen. I didn't say here, listen, listen attentively. He said, the day they signed those papers with the WTO. Oh, that's it. That's it. He said, get ready, Bahamas. They will sign your death warrant. As this word was spoken to me, I saw what looked like a tug of war. The rope was the size of the, the, you know, the cruise, those big cruise ships that come in, those rope that they use to pull up on shore. That was the size of the rope. And as I look at the scene, I saw many people on one side. And there was one person on the next side, and they were pulling. And I said, God, and I spread, I began to speak to God. I said, God, how can this one person fight against so many on this side? He said, the one person on this side is the Bahamas, the single person. And he said, the other people on that side was a long line of people on this tug of war. He says, the nations. He said, that's the many nations that are coming. And they were pulling in this tug of war. And as I look on and see so many people pulling on this rope in this war, the Holy Spirit said to me, the war is on. He said, there's a war going on. What you are seeing, Rosie, is the war that is going on for this nation. He said, and then he spoke to me about this, the one person. He said that the next, set, the next side was the many different nations that are coming for a piece of the nation. He said the side with the single one is the Bahamas fighting. Listen to this. He said fighting for her last bit of sovereignty. That's what the war is about. He said because when you sign that why he said to me, y'all remember, don't be deceived by flurry words. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because he said, you sign your death words, and our death word will be, we'll be signing away our sovereignty. That's right. He said, you will not know the face of this nation as you know it today. Oh he said, you are, you are dealing with evil men bullying small nations. Yes. Right. That's what he's dealing with. And he said, I've given you blind and ignorant leaders because of the hardness of our hearts. He said, Rosie, do you know that I'm about to turn this little nation upside down? Yes, I'm about to turn it upside down. Intercessors, he said, open your eyes and look. And as he said this, I began to see, and I saw devastation. He said, look at the devastation in the land. Hmm. Some hard times, he says, coming again. He said, get ready, get ready. He said, poverty will rise at another level, which Bahamian people have never seen before, never seen before. or have never That's known so. before. It's going to rise. The, the road will be going. But y'all remember, he said, it could be intercepted. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You and I, if this country, and so many of us who call ourselves believers would pray. And not the form of prayer. He said, could be intercepted. He said, poverty will arise in this nation like Bahamian people have never known or experienced it before. He said, if I don't interfere or intervene, he said, riots and murders will be the normal today. My God, my God, my God. He said, we will be alive. We will be alive. Against the scourge of evil and the plague that wants to overtake your life. He said,
said, the Bahamian people are set in their own ways. He said, if I do not intervene in the next general election, he said, they will elect polit political leaders that is worse than what they have now. Jesus. He said, they will continue to go back and forth. F and M, P, L, P, F and M, P, L, P. He said it's a stronghold in the way the Bahamian, he said their mindset of thinking. Yes, yes, yes. I'm only writing it what he gave me. He said, I will have to intervene. And I believe he's intervening for the remnant that's crying on yes. his mind. Yes. And this was after I came out. I wrote this down. This was March 26. He said, I will sit on the seat of judgment. And I will judge this nation. The nation will. I said the judgment will bring about a wave of repentance. This is for the government of the Bahamas. I've never gotten for the government before. This is my first time. And these words, as I lay out before God one day, He said, I will sweep the house of assembly clean from top to bottom. I saw that. Wow. He said, I'm going to sweep it clean. I saw it. He said, there will be a shaking in the government that they have never, never seen before. Heads will roll in the House Assembly. Everyone who is in the House Assembly, he said, I'm going to shake them to the very core. He said, not one will be left standing. And then he said, every head will be cut off. I will sing the Lord hand pick. So we gotta pray. Yes, yes, yes. For God to intervene yes, yes. because of the stronghold of the 90% of the Indian people. That God can will hand pick. He said, I will hand pick. But do you know we, we can tie God arms? And what God wants to do? I can tell you that by scripture, God did not want Israel to have a king. That's correct. That's that's right. that's right. Israel wanted a harden of her heart, a stubbornness. She did not. He did not choose Saul. They choose Saul. And he said, "Give it to them, Samuel. Give it. That's what they want." But they paid for it. And then he said, as the word, he said, I will handpick from among who I will choose. And you, and I will rise up one. And I put mine on one, because I don't block God anymore. Mm -hmm. He said, because he did not reveal to me who those one was. He said, but I'm going to rise up one. And I'm going to put in position. And as these words were spoken to me, I said, Lord, is this the one? Because there was a, a person who I know uh, uh, and everybody knows I called the name and, and asked if God was giving me he's going to rise up one and I said, God, is this the one? God said, no, that's not the one. I look at a man's heart. No. But that one will be a part of what I will do for the change in the nation. I know. Yes. I know. Yes. Yes. I know. I know. Wow. But that's not the one who God wants to lead the nation. Yes. 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 Mm. And he said, no, no, see, that's not the one. And then the Holy Spirit replied, as he will be a part of it. And then he said, I will do a new thing and surprise everyone in this land. And then he said, who you be thinking, I'm going to rise up. And he said, when it's all said and done, he said, there will be another chapter written in the history book of the Bible. He said, there will be another chapter written in the history book wow. of the land. I will stop as far as Grand Bahama. I would give you America and Israel. 
and China. They were two nations that I brought this time. But I can tell you one thing for America, there's some kind of an exposure coming with the news media. Mm -hmm. Great level. Yes. I mean that. Yes. That's the much I can say on that. And this is for the city of Nassau. Nassau. I've never gotten for the government, and I've never gotten for Nassau in all these years, specifically Nassau. Mm. And specifically the government. And while I was sitting at the table in quietness before the Lord, and this is in the VV hours of the morning, I like to look out at the glass because it brings in nature and I can see the stars and I begin to go after God. He said to me, Rosie, the handwriting is on the wall for Nassau. Mm -hmm. He said, devastation and uprising and calamity like Nassau I've never seen in the days from the time of Stafford Sands. Mm -hmm. There are going to be uprising and devastation in Nassau. He said, rebellion will rise in every corner of the city. Chaos after chaos in the street. Every man will say, I want my voice to be heard. Rebellion will take place not only in the streets. He said it will start in the house of assembly and flow over to the streets. My God, my God, my God. Chaos and rebellion will be felt in the house of assembly and among the leadership. He said it will be a time of great devastation and calamity. It will seem as if the heavens are shot over Nassau, a time of darkness. Every man is doing their own thing. And when I thought this, I remember the, the book of Judges. Where he said, Israel, every man was doing, would seem it right in his own heart. He said, every man doing his own thing. He said, Rosie, my hand will stretch over that soul. He said, I will stretch it with a heavy hand. He said, pastors will drop to their knees crying out. Prophets and intercessors will go. He said, now they will go in true travail and pray. He said, I will get the full attention of my church. Their cry and travail will be for real this time. He said, they will not meet and have a gathering of prayer for form, but this time it will be for real. He said, Rosie, it is going to be real bad. He said, because Mr. Hubert Millis is full bent on doing his own thing. With no regard for man, he will pay for the consequences of his arrogance. There was a prophetic word for a woman in Nassau in high authority. And I saw this in vision, but I will not relate it because it's for somebody in Nassau. But what I got for Nassau, that's it. Right there, that rebellion and uprising everywhere. People were standing up and protesting. Like he said, I saw it all over. It was it was bad. Every everybody was coming out of the woodwork protesting. And I believe because somebody sent me a clip because I was in Nassau uh, over the holiday weekend uh, ministering, and uh, they sent me a clip of our TV. Our TV. I've never heard of it until last day, but I saw a clip of the news and the clip was talking about uh, what is coming with the, uh, the immigration, with the white callers coming in. And, I said, and, I said, and as I was listening to it, it flashed back, this will burst out the chaos when you talk about oh, yeah. Because I was trying to figure out yeah. where this chaos and this riot and rebellion coming from. Yeah. And then when I heard the news, I said, this is going to burst, this is going to open the door for what is coming. And then the person said, they showed me a clip of a uh, the MP for, I think it's Pine, Pastor, Pastor Michael Pine standing up and others walking out of the House of Assembly and they wrote to the bottom of the clip, it has already started in the House of Assembly. It has, it has. Because I was in Nassau with this. But I saw a lot of riot and a lot of calamity coming uh, to Nassau. Yes. 
and people were standing up, and that's like Nassau. Nassau stand up quicker and more than any other yeah. island in the Bahamas. I'm thankful for what we did in Grand Bahama. We were trendsetters with that match. Nobody have ever did it before. We came out in grand style. Mm -hmm. And one person said, we, when we do stand, we stand together. So I give God thanks for that. Mm -hmm. As the boy first, we will be taking that to Nassau next, uh, not next month, in June. And then from there, we'll be going to the other islands with it. To stand and make a voice, make our voice be heard. This is for Grand Bahama, and I close with this. Like I said, I wouldn't give it America, China, or Israel because of the time, and I have another engagement. Uh, this is for Grand Bahama. As I was in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me uh, Grand Bahama. Uh, I began to see a barrenness and dryness, and then he said these words. Grand Bahama, your time of barrenness is almost to the fulfillment. Oh, Jesus. So we have we are all we are just on the verge yeah. of the fulfilling of the barrenness. And I remember when I got this word for Grand Bahama, I remember in 2003 or 2004 when he sent me to the streets to walk barefooted and prophesy say, to the four winds from the west to the east. It took me one year and three months. He said, do not exempt not one area of Grand Bahama. And as I began to prophesy, about what was coming, it seems impossible to me. Till I went home and I questioned God, I said, God, you sure just you what you tell me? It was about the storms that were coming. It was about the drought. But at that time, I was only saying what I was given, but I did not understand. And he said, Rosie, you say what I asked you to say. Because at that time, Grand Bahama was in its fullness, Everson George was living. Didn't know he was going to die that very year coming up. And I remember him saying, when Edwards and George were moved off the scene, then everything in Grand Bahama will shift. Mm -hmm. He said, because Edwards and George was holding back, was pushing back, was pushing back. what the rest wanted to do. That is true. Wow. And then he said to me, they will run to the government. They will run to the poor authority, but there will be no prosperity in this land until I say it. Mm. So when he was giving me this, he said, I said when the drought will start, and I will say when the drought will end. That's right. That's right. He said, when your time of barrenness has ended and, and, the full, and the fruitfulness will spring up. You'll hear that? He said, fruitfulness will spring up like wells all over the land. Fruitfulness will spring up all over the land. Like wells all over the land. He said there will no longer be pockets of wells. Do you understand what God is saying? Yes, yes, yes. He said there will be pockets. I mean, you will have pockets of wells. It's going to be from the land. It's going to be in just in the free point all over there. The whole land wells going to spring up. And as I was getting this, I saw it was like a flint, water chill, a water spot. <laughs> and there was all of those wells, wells springing up. And he said, the fruitfulness will be throughout the land. The glory will be in the east. He said, I the glory going to rise in the east. He said, there will be big wells and small wells flowing throughout the land. In other words, there will be big business and small business. So get ready, on entrepreneurs. Amen. Get in position, in position to open up your business and not work for other people when the fruitfulness begin to spread throughout the land. That you will be in ownership, whether your business be a big well or a small well. So get ready. He said, there will be well, small wells flowing throughout the land. Grand Bahama will be fruitful again. Your sons and your daughters will return to a land overflowing with abundance of fruitfulness. Glory to God. Praise your Lord. He said, Rosie, as sure as you can hear my voice, Grand Bahama will be fruitful again. He said, well, 
he said, and this is what he told me. Then the Holy Spirit said these words to me. He said, no politician will be able to clog up these wells this time. Yes. And so when he said those words to me, that telling me, Grant Bahama wells were supposed to be unclogged a long time, but it was politicians that clogged it up. He said, not this time. They're going to be able to clog the, these wells up. When the drought will begin, and I will decide when the drought will end. Not the government, not the investors. I will decide when the wells of fruitfulness will flow again in Grand Bahama. Give God some glory. Amen. 
would want his people to get in position even entrepreneurial is because he is preparing this um, transfer of wealth into your hands, but you have to be in position to receive the transfer. Yeah, that's right. And if, you don't, if you're not in position, you cannot receive the transfer. Mm -hmm. And you have to begin to see things the way God sees it. Yes. And you have to do not put limits on yourself. You begin to speak over your lives. Yes. Speak over your family. Begin to decree things. Yes. And listen, when it comes to the pursuit of God, you pursue God with all that you have, and you be consistent in pursuing God. Yes. Because when you are consistent and persistent, God will manifest in your life. Amen. We can't be walking around here anymore talking about God's going to bless me, God's going to bless me, and you are not doing what God has called you to do. Too many people are living in this falsehood. you got to fulfill God's plan for your life, and you got to be persistent and consistent, in it. and you watch how God will bless you. Super abundantly. Amen. 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 Well, we just thank God for Prophetess Rosie Reckley. I know she had to move on, but let's give God praise for her. Amen. Amen.